Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, you see, be careful what you ask for. I tried to give y'all a break by not doing no videos for a week and a half or so, but no, y'all just needed y'all daily dose of cocaine. Okay, I apologize that it was two weeks because the 24th of April was the last video I did and then I did one on the 4th. So roughly about two weeks. All right, that's what you get. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna talk about something um, because it's necessary to talk about this because a lot of people are experiencing this problem. If you have not been paying attention and many of you have not, I go shopping maybe once a month. And when I go shopping, let me see if I have a receipt up here for my shopping experiences because I go shopping for only certain items because I don't, I really don't eat a lot. I told all of you how I buy jumbled eggs because jumbled eggs, <laughs> I gotta stop doing these videos. Jumbled eggs is like two eggs in one. So you end up, you might end up paying 60 cents more for jumbled eggs over opposed to uh, large eggs or extra large. But hold on, hold on. I went to Walmart, it cost me $2.38 for jumbled eggs. This receipt is from, what's the date on this mother sucker? February. Now this is not the last one I had, this is just the receipt that I found. From February. This is from February, but I also went in April. And they were the same price, $2.38. Okay, now hold on. They're three dollars and sixty cents now. How in a, did they go up by a dollar and thirty cents? Have you not noticed that everything is going up? All the prices are going up drastically, not not incrementally. You know, like uh, five cents here, ten cents there. No, 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 no. Sticker shock. They told you guys before the year begun. Remember, they did the tax cut, right? <laughs> they got to pass those savings on to somebody. And so we have to suffer for their tax cuts because when they do a tax cut, they're taking money out of their so-called annual budget as a corporation. So they have to pass on that to someone and nobody told you that it was you that they were passing that on to. Well, let me be the 18,000th person to tell you, sucker, they passed it on to you. Okay, sorry, I, I keep all receipts. It's a habit. I gotta live with it too, that I just keep receipts just to be keeping them. Yeah, see, these are from April. So let me check my April receipts from Wally World. Yes, I choose to go to Wally World. I apologize that I go to Wally World and y'all can't go to Wally World because y'all got a prejudice against Wally World and their mon monopolization. Wally World is a monopolization. Okay, Wally World is a monopolization. I'm sorry, I just can't find a receipt that has them eggs on it, but I do know because I buy them every month. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not joking when I say I buy them every month. To go from, even from February, to go up by a dollar and 60 cents, why? There is no explanation for it. They'll give us an explanation. They'll say, oh, well, you know, the price of corn has risen, and so it costs more to feed the chickens. Now, I got to apologize, y'all. I got to apologize. February 15th, they were 374. Okay, so they went from 374, almost a dollar more within a month's time. This is from April, not possible. There is nothing in the economy that shows prices should be going up that much, but I've gone in there and all the prices are up drastically. Now, why is that? Now, remember, they're the cheapest place to get food. That's why you buy the cheap food at Walmart because Walmart is cheap. The food is cheap, not healthy. Ladies and gentlemen, they are trying to stretch you all to your bare bones, to where you're completely 
at their mercy. It's called austerity. They pass on those so-called savings to you. They give savings to the corporations and the so-called wealthy in their tax cut. Because we got Donald Trump in office. He's a pro. He's in it for the pure corporations. Okay. Look, they touted the tax cut as his big measure. That was his Obama plan. You know, Barack Obama had his health care. Well, Trump had his tax cut. Okay. When they did the stupid tax cut, remember they rushed it. They still haven't approved the budget, have they? But they raised defense spending by several hundred billion dollars a year. Where do you think they're getting this extra money? Are they just making it out of thin air? No, because it doesn't work that way. If they keep creating it out of thin air, it becomes valueless, but it already has no value. But they operate a commercial system. It has commercial value and a commercial economy. The economy is the people. We're going to be explaining it in our newsletter at SATCOM at SATFIRE newsletter. You'll be able to view that online. Those of you who subscribe, you'll get a link and you'll be notified. Won't be notifying people in no video about the Sapphire because that's subscription based. How do I get a subscription? Just go to the website and go to the bottom of the first page and click on subscribe. Okay. All right. This is what we want to talk about because that's the title of the video. Now, we want a repossession release form. Okay. This is what you guys need to know. Oh, by the way, we told you guys, you're going to love this video. I promise you, you're going to love this video. <laughs> okay. <sighs> now, ladies and gentlemen, you get your automobile repossessed and you notice they won't release it until you pay all these fees. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You get your automobile repossessed, and they won't release it until you pay all of them. Ah, uh ah, -uh. ah, uh ah. -uh. If your car has been repossessed and you live in California, here's what you need to know. Most people think that if they don't pay the car loan, the lender will come and repossess their vehicle. Now, hold on. Let's go to this because this is Jay Flasherman. Jay Flasherman. Uh, we're going to hear what you got to say because guess what? Jay Flasherman. Um... I'm going to give you some credit. What are your rights under California law if your automobile... Now, this is... We're not going to focus on California. We're telling this is all the states. The, the law is uniform. If your car is repossessed and you live in California. No, I don't have no question. Get out of here. All right. It says that the lender will come and repossess the vehicle. Once that is done, they figure it's all over. That's exactly what my clients thought when they're... When a tow truck was hauling away their Ford Explorer, fast forward a few months and he knows better. Now, let's you getting on my nerves. Y'all getting on my nerves. I don't want that junk. Get out of here. I'm sorry. And ladies and gentlemen, we have the I hope it's corrected. I haven't seen it since I've been going to the site. But previously, when you would go to SACOM, the subscription screen would come up. I had no control over that. And I am. Um, over the website team. So I had no control over that. I did not know that was done before I took over. Okay. Want you to understand something. Ain't no more pop-ups like that. We had one guy tell us that at SACOM, how are we going to make money if our site is down and all that? We're not in this to make money off of people. That's why you don't, we don't do any advertising people. We're not trying to make money. We're not trying to take people's money. We're not trying to profit off of people. We're trying to secure people's assets and we're doing everything in our power. We're getting ready to add something new and I cannot even talk about it on video. That's how important it is. But that's only to the people who have already, not the people currently as of today. No, 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 no. The people prior to May 1st who signed up. No, sorry. March 1st. <laughs> Got to get that correct. The people prior to March 1st. They'll be included in this. Can't tell you what it is. Won't send out no emails letting you know what it is. You just have to know that it's going to benefit you better than it will benefit anyone else. That's why 
it's still a part of the process that you had, but we're adding something that we did not add in the first place that won't cause a consequence negative, only cause a consequence positive. Okay, that's why I can't talk about it because once I talk about it, everybody else will do it. Oh, God. And then it creates a problem because now we got to try to figure out how to get around it. Well, see, that's why you always put all this information out and handle people saying that you can't be putting information out because you put out too much information. No, this is much different. This is a process that everybody already knows about. It's just, we're not going to be telling you how to do it because we don't want to get the influx ahead of us doing it. And I don't care. Okay, let's go on. Who can repossess a vehicle? Who cares? Under California law, a car finance company, as well as the registered repossession agency, can repossess your automobile. In order to have an have authority to repossess a vehicle, the company must be licensed and registered with the California Department of Consumer Affairs Bureau of Security and Investigation Services. Investigative. You should always ask to see the license before surrendering your car to a repossessing agent and verify that license with the California Bureau. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to surrender your car. Notice what this attorney said. You should ask to see their license before you surrender your car. You don't have to surrender nothing. Either they got the right to take it or they don't. Don't let the police tell you it's a civil matter. Either they have the right, where is the license? That license them gives them the authority to take my car. If they don't have that license at the time they show up here and you're here, then they have no jurisdiction. And you are empowered to enforce the law. Well, if they don't have a right, that's theft. Okay? And the repossession agent must have the license number showing that they are registered. Not that the repossessing company is registered. No, that the company doing the repossession. I would definitely check the law, people. Because it might get technical. It might say the repossession company needs to be licensed. Okay? So you might want to check. But anyway, repossession agents in California can't come onto private buildings such as a garage, nor can they enter a secured or locked area such as a gated driveway without permission of the owner of the premises. Your car can, however, be repossessed from unsecured driveways, streets, parking lots, and other publicly accessible areas in California at any time, day or night. Okay. That's how they get you for coming on private lands. If it's just in a parking lot, if it's just in the driveway, they can come and take it because they say it's accessible to the public. You don't need to be present when the vehicle is taken. So if you park on the street or go to sleep, there's a chance your car will be gone when you wake up. There's a chance? Why would there be a, cha a chance? Now, hold on. This is all leading to something. Y'all just got to pay attention to me and Ray. He said, none of us. Oh, none of us are free. All right. If you happen to be present when the car is being taken, you may be able to save your car by paying the balance due rather than losing your wills. If that happens, then you will have the right to receive an itemized receipt and a repossession agent is required to forward your payment to the car lender. Timeline for repossession. Ladies and gentlemen, California law gives a repossession agent 48 hours to give you notice of seizure that provides you with the name and contact information of both the owner and the repossession agency. Okay, now hold on. Selling your car. In California, it says notice of intent to sell must be served within 60 days of repossession and gives you the right to ask for the lender to delay the sale for 10 days. Okay, now hold on. Hold on. It says... In California law, the lender needs to serve you either personally or by certified mail, by certified or first class mail. You see that first class? They can just say they sent you something in the mail. You at least, they need to serve you at least 15 days written notice of intent to sell your vehicle and notice of intent to sell must be served 60 days within six days of the repossession. Okay, they can't hold on to your car for 100 days. They have to give you that notice. The right to get your car back. That's what we're talking about. Now, hold on. Hold on. I want to read this last part right here. Okay? So let's 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 do this. Let's read this one before we go on because we're going to let this 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 uh, young lady 
you know what? I always, I always thought this was Diana Ross who sang this song. No, no, not Diana Ross. Then what am I talking about, Diana Ross? I always thought this was uh, that 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 psychic character, Dion Warwick. I did not know this was Jackie. Jackie, I am so sorry for confusing you with Dion Warwick because ever since she started doing that psychic stupid stuff, I ain't had no respect for that cow. But you, Jackie, we. We, we, we good. All right, let's get back to the remember repossession is not the end. If you fall behind in your car payments, California law doesn't leave you hanging. You can cure the default. It's called a notice to cure, opportunity to cure and keep your car. If you lose your car, you might not have to pay any deficiencies. Hmm. And if you are sued for the deficiencies, there are ways to defend the case. So long as you are proactive, things may not turn out so bad. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you notice how they don't tell you what you need to do? So let me tell you what you're going to do. This is a way for you to get your car back after it's been repoed. Now, remember, it has to be within a short period of time. You can't wait four or five months to where they sell the car. Okay, let's say you just had your car repossessed like three weeks ago. And the car has not been sold yet. Uh, hold on, Jackie. Look, Jackie. Jackie. See, I got you. You hold on for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're having your automobile repossess, if somebody comes and takes the automobile off your property, remember, if you have do not trespass signs, on your property and you it must be before the vehicle on the vehicle there are several ways you know what i just forgot to tell you guys there, there are a couple of things that we're going to tell you um the person who told me this next part is an attorney and not i'm not telling you this because he's an attorney but he has given me permission to mention it to you guys so i'm going to mention it i'm going to mention it first you need to contact the place where your car originally arrived that actually had the car and sold it, the actual original dealership. You need to call them and tell them that you own the car and you want the MSO. There is no reason for them to hold on to the MSO. That is the original receipt for the automobile. You need to just show proof that you're the owner and request the MSO. You will pay attention to what I'm saying. Well, I tried doing that. I'm not talking to you. Sorry. That's the type of people I'm dealing with. Okay. I'm talking to the people who know how to listen. I'm not talking to the people who want to sit up here and cut me off before I can finish a sentence. Ladies and gentlemen, before you call that dealership, you already know who they are because you purchased it. But let's say you own an automobile and like me, you don't know where it was originally purchased. You call the dealership. Not the dealership, I'm sorry, the actual company. Now, Toyota of America, Honda of America um, and Honda. And then you have Nissan. So Nissan, Infinity, Honda. And what's the other one? Acura. And what's what else is Honda? Well, don't worry about it. Acura is Honda. Infinity is Nissan. Toyota is Lexus. You call the original dealer. If it's an American car maker, you call their main office. Tell them you need to get the MSO for your car. Okay. They'll say that it's at the dealership. Say, well, I've talked to the dealership. They say that it's with you. I'm not telling you to lie. I'm not telling you to lie. I am suggesting that when you call them, they're going to give you a response. It's a tailored response. And so list me as they. Okay. So when you tell them, they say it's with you, I'm they. They say it's at your offices or they say they don't have it. I don't got it, y'all. It's at their offices. I don't got it. Y'all need to go call them. Here's the number. And you just say that they said it. Then I'll be they. If you need a they, I will be they. 
you get the MSO, then you go and you get that automobile deregistered. But when I say deregistered, you still have it registered. You don't need to mind it being registered. What you want is it to be exempt because you're not leasing it. You're not using it for commercial business. This is ownership. You're using it for personal business. Look, I don't care what you do with that information. I'm not here to give you, oh, well, they told me this and they told me that. Can you tell me what to do next? That ain't my job, people. Stop texting me, emailing me, asking me how to finish some process you started. That's your research. Sorry, I get a lot of emails from people trying to tell me that this is what happened and that's what happened or they need to access their TDA account. Ladies and gentlemen, trust me, the TDA account and the, I said TDA, I said TDA has not disappeared. It has not gone anywhere. They just changed the process on how to access it. Okay. That's all that's happened. All right, no, we told you we're going to give you that information. That was information given to me by somebody who's just done that. He's had his car for a year, bought it brand, well, he bought it brand new using the OID process. Yeah, I know, I know. Don't worry about it. I'm not here to explain that. And those of you out there who try to do this, you deserve what you get because you don't know what you're doing. All right. But he's had his for a year and when he got the MSO. Well, they're taking care of that now. All right. So there you go. All right, let's get back to if your automobile is repossessed in the state of California, in the state of New York, in the state of duplicity, in the state of stupidity, doesn't matter where it's repossessed in the confines of the United States. This is what you must do. Hold on. I skipped the letter and I know there it is right there. Chapter seven, bankruptcy. I knew that A didn't get in there. I, I When I click on the A, my hand doesn't hit hard enough and I'm heavy handed. Come over here and watch me slap you. I promise you I'm heavy handed. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if your car is repossessed, all you have to do, that's right, for a limited time only, is file a Chapter 13 bankruptcy and introduce the car information and the uh, contract into the bankruptcy case. Guess what? You don't have to pay any storage fees. You want to introduce the car information into the case, and if it's repossessed, list the repossession company as a creditor. <laughs> Oh, no. Let me explain what happens when they take your car. Pay attention. Debt.org. I don't even know who these people are. OK, but let, let me make sure you all pay attention. We're not even talking about that right now. If you want to call them and get them to file it for you, knock yourself out. But I'd file Chapter 13. I do a fee waiver. You feel me? You, you feel me? You file Chapter 13. You do your fee waiver. See, applicants need to pay $235 filing fee to the bankruptcy court, as well as a $75 miscellaneous administrative fee. See, they call it miscellaneous because they pay you pay them $75 to do the paperwork. So, plus you pay the filing fee. Okay, and I promise you, ask them if you want to call these people. I don't know who these people are. It says, first, you should find a bankruptcy attorney who can provide you with a free evaluation and estimate to file. The cost for to file a Chapter 13 bankruptcy consists of filing fees and fees charged by the bankruptcy attorney. Applicants need to pay blah, 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 blah. I would go over this site because this is telling you what you need to do. Once you get that, remember we were clicking on release letter? Well, that's exactly what they're going to issue is a release letter. That release letter is what will get you your car back and you pay no fees. You pay no storage fees, you pay no locker fees, you pay no stock fees, you pay no broker fees, you pay no closing costs, you don't pay nada, nada, Feliz nada, da. okay, you don't pay nothing, okay? 
Nothing. Nada. See, I picked up release form, but you notice I don't see. Give me one second. I'm looking for the release form part because that's the other thing that we're going to be talking about. All right, let's get back to the following chapter 713. I mean, chapter 13, bankruptcy. I said chapter 713, chapter 7 and chapter 13. That's my fault. Okay. What is happening is by filing that, that's a bankruptcy. That means all debt collection activities must cease. Repossession of a car is a debt collection activity, which means that they cannot hold on to your automobile. But I don't want to file me because if I file bankruptcy, they told me I can't file bankruptcy for the next 85,000 years. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to make the decision. But let me let you know. If the court tells me that I can't file bankruptcy, then guess what I'm filing? This is me. I'm going to file bankruptcy. Why am I going to file bankruptcy? Because somebody just took my car and that's an option to me. And I don't care because it's going to take them some time to dismiss it, even if I do it in a, another entity's name. Okay. I can't tell you to do anything illegal. Can't suggest you do anything illegal. It doesn't work that way. I said, if it were me, would I be lying by just filing another bankruptcy? No, because the entire country is bankrupt. But that's my, pay attention, that's my understanding. I can't give you an understanding for you. I can only give you, uh oh, I hit three. I was supposed to hit two. I wasn't trying to hit three. I was trying to hit two. See, I was using touchscreen, but my fingers are huge. Yeah. Um, let's get back to this repossession thing. They can't charge you fees. They must deliver the automobile back to you without charging you a single fee. They may require that you go down to their facility and pick it up, but those are your rights. There's a lot more to this, such as the young lady who called me last week. There's a lot more to this. I'm not here to give you everything. Okay? That's not that's not what it that's not what I'm here for. That's not what this information is here for. This is me to give you an idea. Okay? This is me for me to give you an understanding so that you can better effectuate what you need to do. I do have a lot to do today, so I was looking for that form. It's called a Pay attention. Let's go up here to the top. Release form. Now, for people who are arrested, like I told you, a gentleman was filing a bankruptcy on their behalf and introducing the case number into the bankruptcy. He was creating a release form. I'm giving, I've already given this to you guys, so this is not new. He created a release form regarding the person who was in jail. Do not email me asking me any questions about this. You hear my voice? You hear the tone? That's how I feel about you people. I mentioned something on video and then you want to start shooting out and porting out your ideas about what you think. I don't care about what you think. Okay? You didn't know about this before I told you. So don't try to push your ideas my way. I don't want your suggestions. See, that's like a five-year-old coming to a 31-year-old and trying to tell him how to literally operate the lawnmower that he designed, that he created. I'm bringing up the subject, but yet you people who have not even thought about the subject are going to come and try to bounce your ideas off of me. Please stop that. I told you I'm not here for that. And if that, hold on, if that pisses you off, if that makes you feel so disconcerted, if that makes you feel like tomorrow is never going to get here, fine! I apologize. People say, <laughs> you're offending me. Good. Because I'm so tired. You people on YouTube can be extremely difficult to deal with. When I say... Don't email me. Don't ask me questions. I'm serious about that. I'm tired of ignoring you. It actually makes me not feel good. 
to ignore you. But I have no choice when I tell you, don't do it, and it concerns me and my stuff, and you do it anyway. That means you're ignoring me. That means you're not listening to me. That means you're telling me how to, I'm going to live my life and how to, you're going to live yours. And that you're going to control me. You're going to dictate to me what I be, how I be. Oh, that was my A. I just want to let y'all know because y'all need to see this right here. Hold on. Y'all see this right here? I called them 70 uh, pills. Okay, these are 70 little pills, but they taste better than the pills that they give you at the hospital. Ooh, doggy, the doctors give you some pills and you try chewing that stuff and see how good it's going to taste. That's why they had to make them Flintstones Cheerables. Many of you are not old enough to recognize that. Before Flintstones Chewable Vitamins and the so-called, um, what do you call those pills? The gel pills and the pills that had the coating on it? Uh, no. That junk was nasty. They used to just give you the stupid pill and it would break up. And your, that whole taste was horrible because it was chemicals, people. So now they've sugar-coated it. Oh, you're talking. You're making a joke. That's right. They sugar-coated it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. This is Peggy Scott. And she's singing. Bill. Okay, I like this song when it first came out. Let's get back to you guys so that you get it. That was the video I did on that. And I did it because I can't offer medical advice to people because I don't want your medical advice. So why would I give you medical advice? But what I did is I just showed people that I've been looking for a long time for an appetite suppressant. Well, I found for me my appetite suppressant. It is 11.52. I've been up since 4 this morning. Okay, four o'clock, people. We're going on eight hours. And guess what? I'm not hungry. And I promise you, I promise you, I really am not hungry. All the other times I would eat just to be eating because I just had that desire to snack on something, to eat. I am so grateful that I found something that I've been looking for years for, an appetite suppressant. So that's my appetite suppressant video. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the repossession issue. If the police impound your vehicle for unpaid tickets, if they boot your vehicle for unpaid tickets, chapter 13 bankruptcy. Do your research on what a chapter 13 bankruptcy is. Okay? Do your research on what a chapter 13 bankruptcy is. And as long as you can, follow the steps. Follow the steps, people. That's all you have to do. And they must give you your car back. Do not call me telling me they, they told me that, that I was on crack if I think they were giving me my car back. I don't want to hear it. I, I can only, I don't care what they tell you. I can only tell you what the law says. And right now, look, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to bring a lawsuit. Well, I'm getting ready to bring a lawsuit on behalf of someone. And it has taken me I thought I had the angle to go at four weeks ago, and I didn't. But now I have an angle to go at, and I like it because it's unique in so many ways. And I ran it by a couple people, and they couldn't get it. But it hammers everything at the core. I will do a video uh, showing you guys the angle to go at because I'm going after getting a common law venue. And I believe I figured out a way to at least bring it to light that it doesn't exist and having them documented on the record. Cause you know, they haven't documented on the record. They won't tell you what jurisdiction it is. So I believe I found a way to lock them in place regarding jurisdiction. 
So we'll let you guys know when that time comes. But impounding of your automobile, repossessing of your automobile, that's the same process, people. When the police impound your vehicle, they're doing it through the DMV. They've issued tickets and they've hired an agency as their debt collector. The debt collector is registered and they hire a registered repossession company to repossess your car and that's called impounding. You get pulled over on the highway and the police repossess your car by impounding your automobile. First, the reason why they impound your automobile is because they claim you're on a public highway. You have to understand, you have 72 hours to leave that vehicle parked on that public highway. Now, we're not talking about a freeway. You only have 24 hours to remove a vehicle that's parked along the shoulder of a freeway. You cannot be parked in the emergency lane of a freeway, but you can be parked in the so-called, um, I forgot what that stupid little lane is on the side. It's not, well, you all call it emergency, but we're not talking about that when we use the phrase emergency. There's another word for it, okay? But it's the shoulder of the highway that you can pull over on a freeway where it's not an emergency shoulder. Emergency shoulders usually tend to say no stopping on the freeway. If you've seen those signs that says no stopping anytime, okay, those are the ones that you don't want to sit up there and have them pull you over. Okay, you have the right to bring your automobile and park it on a lot but like i told people you should get those clear signs create your do not trespass put that on your car put that in your wallet put that on your cell phone do not trespass put that on your computers my computer has a nice little label that says private property notice hyphen no trespass then it puts 25 CFR 11-411. So let's do 25 CFR 11-411 to see if I was doing the right thing. But you're using a statute. Shut up. Okay. 25. I don't know the, the letters in the alphabet in Spanish. I just know the numbers. <laughs> Didn't learn anything, did I? Because it wasn't. Hey, look, it's already there. It's already there. So give us a second. Criminal trespass. Uh oh. 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 Anyway, criminal trespass. A person commits an offense if, knowing that he or she is not licensed or privileged to do so, he or she enters. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. We went too far. Oh, that's the same thing. It's not license or purpose to do so. He or she enters or super maliciously, superstitiously remains or surreptitiously, excuse me, surreptitiously remains in any building or occupied structure. An offense under this subsection subsection is a misdemeanor and if it is committed in a dwelling at night if it is a party uh, if it is a pity um, if it's committed otherwise it's a petty misdemeanor but if it's committed in a dwelling at night it's a misdemeanor so a petty misdemeanor is a ticket that's a petty misdemeanor a misdemeanor is you can be arrested and given a notice to appear person who commits an offense if, knowing that he or she is not licensed or privileged to do so, enters in and remains in a place to which notice against trespass is given. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not, and now look, pay, pay attention. It says, person commits this if they enter or remain in a, any place. Well, you open up my computer, you open up my wallet, you open up my cell phone, you're entering into a place that you are not welcome so thus, no trespassing. Posting in a manner prescribed by law are reasonably likely to come into the attention of intruder or see an actual communication to the actor. So in other words, no trespassing. You're not allowed to trespass on my automobile. You don't need a sign. You just need to say you are not, this is private property. You're not allowed to trespass on my automobile. I will have someone come pick it up. Well, we need you to get somebody over here now. Excuse me. 
I have 24 hours to have this automobile picked up. So no, you don't have my right. Because see, when the police take your automobile, ladies and gentlemen, you don't understand. So let me explain to you. They do what they call an inventory search. Sorry, let's let that go. They do an inventory search, ladies and gentlemen. They call it an inventory search because people were claiming that the police were taking things out of their car. The impound yard was taking things out of their car. So they literally do an inventory search. That search is also included in their investigation. You just have to let them know because they're, you're being recorded. You ask the officer, am I being recorded right now? Okay, this is private property. You do not have my right to take my property. Now, if you are caught doing something stupid and your car is part of an investigation, you don't have the right to tell them what they don't have the right to do. Okay? This is not a video to explain to you how to handle those situations. This is a video of me explaining to you guys how to handle repossession. This bringing up this thing about no trespass, this is me telling you that this is on my automobile, this is on my computer, this is in my wallet. You open up my wallet, it's the first thing you see. Big huge sign. Well, it's not huge, but you know, it's the same. No, it's actually smaller than the one that's on my computer. But it literally says private property, no trespass, the same exact thing as the other. Okay, and the problem is making something to fit in the wallet and the material that makes it stick. That material is not easy. It's not easy, cheesy. It's not easy being cheesy. Oh, God, he's being cheesy right now. It ain't easy. So, sorry, had to break the tape. You know, it takes a fool to learn. And I've been a fool. Okay. All right. Now, with that being the case, I got one more stick that I need to do. And ladies and gentlemen, that's me being heavy handed. Told you I was heavy handed. Almost breaking. Well, actually, I did crack it. Because I'm heavy handed. Like I said, let me come over, come over here. Let me slap you and see how I feel. Because I was heavy handed. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, again. This video was designed to show you guys how to go about getting your automobile back. If you are worried about someone repossessing your property, get the MSO, get that retaken care of. Okay, here's the problem. This video is not designed to teach you guys how to get your automobiles back or pay for your automobiles. Yes, 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 I have taken care of all of my debt but that was me doing that. I promised that I would not go through helping all of you do the same. Why? Because a lot of people were calling me um, and when they were calling me, they wanted to know how to get rid of their debt so they can make things better for their family. I got Alzheimer's, my husband's got dementia and my Grandmother, she's got senility. Uh -uh, Dougie, I want to, I, I, Dougie want to talk about nothing, but we ain't going to talk about nothing. We're going to talk about something. Nelly, because it's all in my head. Now I think about it over and over again. Now I keep playing over and over again. And I can't take it. I can't take it. Anyway. I have these individuals calling me up, telling me all their little sob stories, emailing me, giving me all their little sob stories. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not here to handle your business, to help you get out of your situation. I am here to help the masses and not the individual. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one. So no, I will not deal with your individual issues. Okay. Oh, by the way, the, the criminal trespass law that I have, this is from Indian Affairs. I'm native to the soil. <laughs> no, it's the principle of the act. It's the principle of the law. If you take a look at what we just read, look at all the other trespass, no trespass laws, or trespass, criminal trespass. 
Look at all the other criminal trespass laws and what you will find is they all have the same premise that you must give notice. California, they came up with this thing that you must put the code, if, you, if a person is to be arrested, you must put the code. Other than that, if you call the police and you tell them the person is trespassing and I need them to leave my property, then the police can only ask them to leave. They can't arrest anyone. I went to a Vieiro, 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 whatever that stupid name of that gas station is. I was, I get gas once a month. So I do about 300 miles, 375 miles a month because my tank gets 375 to the gallon. And so I get gas once a month. And I went there and I said, I'm going to go ahead and use my American Express card. So I go to the pump, put the American Express card and it says, you need to see the attendant. So I walk in and I said, excuse me, how come when I tried to use my card at the pump, it tells me I have to come inside? Why isn't there a sign out there telling people that you can't use a card at the pump? Oh, just no, no. If you just give me the card, I'll go ahead and put the information. No, you're not answering my question. I said, why was I at the pump? And I'm intending to use my card and you have the services apparently out there available. Well, you see the screen says that you have to come inside. I said, yes, after I stopped, after I put in my card, but not before. I said, so why wasn't there notification prior to me having to go through all that? I want you to pay attention. Hold on, Nelly and Tim. Tim, Nelly, y'all hold on. This idiot said to me, oh, so you can't just walk in here? Is it too much for you to walk in here? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, this individual was Pakistani. I'm not prejudiced at all. As a matter of fact, I have several friends who are from Pakistan. Well, one person, he's not a friend anymore because he turned out to be a real punk. But anyway, uh, but the other ones are fine people. As a matter of fact, Roger and his family are out of New York. And Roger came to visit. And I am very impressed with this, I will say young man, but he's, and he's probably 68 years old now. But he's a very unique person. So I don't have a problem with people of other nationalities, other cultures. As a matter of fact, I appreciate other cultures. As a matter of fact, I'm actually jealous of other cultures. Because I think they have it so good, even though they think we have it so good. You know, I like the family orientation of certain cultures that we don't have anymore in this country and they're losing it in their countries. But anyway, this individual got sarcastic with me about, was it too much for me to walk into the store? So I said, no, and I put my card back in my wallet and I said, no, that's okay. And he says, well, then don't come back. I said, no, you have my word. I will never come back here again. That's right, just go and you just get out and don't come back and leave. Literally, those are his words. You just go, get out, don't come back and leave. Now, you just said the same thing three different times. Okay. And I, I had walked out. I didn't say anything to him when he was saying all of that. So when I said, now you just said the same thing three different times, I'm saying that to myself. So I walk out. And as I get out the door, I turn around and I go back in. And I said, excuse me. As I told you, I run a company. Uh, what's the store number here? Get out now. Get out now. You leave. You're trespassing. Get out. That's why I'm bringing it up because he literally said I was trespassing. So I went to the next gas station. Now I had just made the payment for that program and I'm getting ready to put some more money on my card, but I just made that payment. So I had eh, probably about $140 left on my card. And so I go to another gas station. I go to the pump and the pump says, go inside. And I said, is this the common thing? And then he ran the card and he says, sir, the card says you only have $3.50 left on your card. And so you're going to have to pay the rest of the money because I was filling up. He says, you're going to have to pay the rest of the money in cash. I'm like, 
Well, it didn't actually say that. It just said that he'd have to collect the rest of the money. It says that only $3.50 were available. And I said, what? I said, there's more than enough for me to make this purchase here. I said, hold on, let me give my credit card company a call. I called them up and they told me that the gas station put a $100 hold on my card, but I never used my card. I never got their services. I told the credit card company and I said, do you see a purchase being made? I said, so I ain't give you guys permission to put a hold on my card. I'm telling you all of this because Vallejo or whatever the name of that stupid gas company is, are gonna be hearing from me, especially when a representative tells me about walking into the store. Ladies and gentlemen, I carry in my the trunk of my car a five and a half foot tall cane that I use. I have muscular dystrophy. I try to do as less walking as possible when I don't have to. Like in a minute to go and refresh my mind so I can work on the words to the lawsuit, I'm gonna take a walk to the beach, which is a four and a half mile walk. But the unique thing about it is that man told me, what, so you just can't walk in? Is it gonna be too much for you to walk into the store? And my response to him was no, because if I wanted to walk into the store, I would have pulled into a gas station for that purpose. But I purposely pulled up to use my card at the pump. That's why I did that. And he just said, well, it da, 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 da. gave me attitude. So now I hold his corporate office accountable for that attitude. That's how I resolve things. That's how things get done for me. And that $100 hold? Oh, no, no, no. You're not just going to remove that off my account. I will file a suit against you. You will be paying me something for putting me through the inconvenience. It's just, it's just the way it is. This is the sue me state. So I'm going to go ahead and sue that person or me who, because it's a sue me state. Well, I'm going to have to sue me. I don't know where me is. Okay, but I'm gonna have to sue him. Um, so again, with repossession, Title 13 or Chapter 13 of the Bankruptcy Code is your only way out. Not Chapter 7, not Chapter 11, not Chapter 10, not Chapter 8, not Chapter 9. Chapter 8, isn't it the, name, the, the group that Anita Baker was with? We ain't talking about that. So, Chapter 13. Now, I want you to understand, like that attorney said, there are some more steps that a person has to follow, okay? The young lady that I spoke with earlier this week, we're giving, I gave her information on both foreclosure and this, but please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the other information I will not reveal here. Why? Because it's now time for you to educate yourself. And if you're in a situation where your automobile has been repossessed already, you're just going to have to do the best you can with what I just gave you. And there are people out there who want to make businesses out of stuff like this. The attorneys are making businesses. The easiest way where you don't have to pay out of your pocket, it doesn't cost you a dime, is that. You want to consult with me about stuff like this? That's going to cost you because you're going to be taking up my time. And don't tell me how much you appreciate my time because you don't. That's why you're going to pay for my time. It's just that simple. The same way as I'm going to make that attorney and that Viero, whatever the name of that stupid gas company is, make them pay for my time. My time is valuable to me. I don't give up. And trust me when I say I don't give up. I said I wasn't going to do that no more, but I don't give up whether or not you value my time. That doesn't mean nothing to me. It doesn't mean nothing to me whether or not you claim you consider my time valuable. I don't care about those words. Those are just words. The only way for me to help people understand is if you want my time, then that's how it works. So, and that young lady, see, here's the thing. The people who get my attention, whom we do the calls and all that, understand they get more than what I agree to. See, I tell them, okay, we only do an hour and then we get 30 minute call after that. That young lady and I talked at least 12 times this week. Why? 
because we have other things that I was helping her with. As a matter of fact, I have some people that I was speaking to in Hawaii. I sent one of them an, a voicemail yesterday, and I got to send the other one. A, a, no, I sent them an email because I don't have their number anymore. But I got to send the other one a voicemail too to let them know that I was thinking about them. I just started hearing about the volcanoes and the lava and stuff in Hawaii. Just started hearing about that because I don't watch the news. Okay. So I just heard about it. Hey, but with that being said, because it's all in my head, it's all in Tim McGraw's head and it's all in Nelly's head. Why don't we just go ahead and say to you guys, I hope this information proves helpful. Please do not text me, email, do not do any of that because it's, it's irritating when you guys do that regarding a video. I got people commenting on my videos after I, it's like a year after I did the video and they're acting like I remember everything in that video when I gave the video. People, I talk about too many things in my videos and that's the unique thing about it. Have you noticed that my videos are multifaceted? That it's not just one subject because that's not what you get with me you get the whole gauntlet and again i show you what i'm talking about okay you know surreptitiously i am interested because i don't know the word I, oh i can admit when i don't know something y'all I don't know this word. I I don't. It's not a word that I'm used to. So that's why it was difficult. But I'm going. We're going to take about thirty seconds and let's say it surreptitiously. Okay, surreptitiously, in a way that attempts to avoid notice or attention secretively. That's regarding somebody who tries to trespass on your property. It's a legalese word. Legalese. All right, got to go. Have a good day.